Good morning. I'm Yosef Jung from the Catholic University of Korea. Nice to meet you. I feel very privileged to get an opportunity to talk on this special event, and I want to thank the organizing committee to have me a part of this. Today, I'm going to talk about Korea experience on the clinical implementation of digital pathology. I finished my education and residency at Yonsei University Wonchuk College of Medicine and finished my PhD at Yonsei University. Currently, I'm working as associate professor at the Catholic University of Korea, Yeongbu St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, my main interest is hematolymphoid, breast, and genital urinary pathology, and currently working on several government projects on the digital pathology and development of pathology AI models. You can reach me to my email or to my research gate through this QR code with your cell phone camera. This is my YouTube channel. You can check out some of my video lectures and study presentations. You can also see my publications and stuff at my research gate. Uh, hope you guys feel free to come by and drop a collaboration opportunity and your valuable insights on my studies. Here I attach the QR codes directly linked to my references so you can check out more about DP and AI. This lecture material is not sponsored by any specific commercial institutes or companies. I, I declare no com conflicting interest according to this lecture material. Today I would like to talk about what digital pathology is and why it is important and if it is really safe, trustworthy, useful for daily practice. And I want to, to introduce the current status of DP implant implementation in Korea and would like to address about some important things to know about DP workflow. And then I, I will briefly talk about quality assurance program for DP and regulatory and healthcare insurance issue on DP in Korea. So what is digital pathology? As you all already know, it is, a, it is a digital transformation of a conventional microscopy-based pathology into monitor-based diagnosis using whole slide scanner. Digital pathology system consists of whole slide scanner, also known as WSS, and the storage that holds the data and the displays that shows the, the image data through slide viewer or pathology packs. You can also run image analysis using specialized software and recently AI models that can analyze the data and support the pathology diagnosis. For this, there should be barcode system that will link the patient data to WSS and through pathology packs. Or sometimes some additional software that can link the slide viewer to EML or HIS. WSS is the most important part of this digital pathology system. The scanner vendors generally also provide image viewers and additional image analysis software. However, since the scanners of different vendors are not getting along with each other, that they all have their own file formats, sometimes you need to use several different viewers and programs at the same time. So now the need for pathology packs is increasing that support all kinds of different scanners by converting various file formats into DICOM and also provide additional image analysis software or AI models more easily. Pathology Packs has specialized feature for managing the storage by categorizing hot and cold data. Because the components, components of the WSS slide viewer and pathology packs is this pathology packs to displays are closely linked together um, to the imaging quality and user experience. It is called imaging chain. Additionally, high definition displays also need high computing power. So displays here actually means PC workstation. Recently, more and more AI models are being actively developed and introduced in the market. Let me explain more in detail of each component. First, whole slide scanner and its viewer and image analysis software. Here you can see that various scanner vendors are providing various scanners with different capacity and the basic operating software along with the viewer. 
They also provide additional additionally portable morphometric analysis software, mostly based on pattern recognition technology. And most of, most of them are uh, FDA cleared and chargeable, uh, although these additional software are highly priced. Especially, for example, Roche does not have high capacity scanner model like other companies do yet, and they uh, they're about to launch a new model this year. However, they are focusing on specializing on their IT, IHC antibodies like CRV2 and recently uh, companion diagnoses such as PDL1 and, and its morphometric analysis program. Next, there are pathology packs. Although there are few major players such as Leica and Philips in the scanner market, there is no standardized file format system for digital pathology as DICOM in radiology packs yet. So recently, the traditional major players in packs market and newly started companies started to make packs patho pathology packs that can convert various file format into DICOM for, for digital pathology. Because they have accumulated technology managing hot and cold storage, they can also provide a platform for additional image analysis and AI-based software. In addition, image analysis and AI-powered expert supporting tools are being actively developed by numerous startup domains such as Page AI, Path AI, Indica Labs from North America, and AI Foria, Path Excel, Bezio Farm, uh, Deep Pathology AI from Europe and Israel, Funo, Lunit, Deep Bio, and Dimnoid uh, from Korea. Recently, main features of the AI models of these companies are focusing on providing supportive information for cancer detection, classification, and grading, and more recently, uh, even mutation prognosis and treatment response prediction based on pathologic images. So why is DP important? First, the number of pathologies is decreasing. In USA during the last decade, the number of pathologies decreased by 18%. Accordingly, the workload of pathologists increased by 42%, and now pathologist community is getting old that almost 74% of pathologists now is more than 40 years old. More and more, the need, needs for experts in subspecialty are increasing because of global aging and increasing cancer burden. Uh, the number of biopsies is increasing 7 to 10 percent annually. More and more new technologies such as fish, companion diagnosis, NGS is appearing and increasing the work bud, uh, workload burden. Because of this climate change of, the, of this industry, the need for digital pathology is getting bigger and bigger because DP can improve quality by allowing more comprehensive diagnosis, reducing human errors with faster and easy consultation and archive review. Because DP is based on an automatically automated sample tracking system, such as barcode or QR code system, it, it improves the um, workflow and reduces the workload and human errors. In addition, it serves as a platform for innovative technologies such as AI and finally increase the productivity of diagnostic services. However, there are some obstacles for implementing digital pathology. DP systems are still quite expensive, so you need more time for scanning during the pathology procedure, uh, need more steps to manage the system, and need more time to get used to it. Actually, uh, beyond the cost of hardware and software systems of digital pathology, the operational cost for additional lab personnel and digital storage is not something that you can neglect about, especially since the operat operational break-even point is after first five to seven years of DP implementation, some people would say DP is nothing but a money pit. About reading time, it's similar to the microscopic diagnosis, and although the time per second review, consultation uh, can be reduced for some, some cases, 
the time for scanning and its QC will increase the overall turnover time, turnaround time. Needless to say, you might also need additional people to scan, run, and manage the DP system. Then, uh, what will be the true value of digital pathology? You guys all might remember that text matches is years back once we used the feature phones. Uh, when the first smartphone came out and people who experienced the messenger applications in the smartphone, uh, they couldn't understand well enough uh, of the difference between text messages and messenger applications. Some people were very pessimistic about smartphone messenger. Now, in Korea, almost 95% of people is using a messenger application called KakaoTalk, and nobody is questioning about why the whole situation has changed now. KakaoTalk was merely a messenger application at first, but now KakaoTalk has communication services like community and blog, content services such as music, TV, news, and e-commerce services, and online to offline services like Kakao Taxi, which is kind of Uber in Korea, game services, financial technology services, and so on. So, uh, what makes this whole difference is that Kakao Talk was a platform technology, but only a communication tool. So here's what we need to reconsider about DP as well. Despite all the initial cost. DP is a gateway to next level of pathology, including whole slide imaging, telepathology, and consultation, digital path image analysis, computer-assisted diagnosis by AI algorithm, and multidisciplinary meetings and student education. So that uh, so we can easily expect that this serves as a platform that will reduce next med uh, net medical cost and enhance healthcare service after all in a long-term perspective. Now, uh, you like to ask me if DP is really safe and trustworthy, useful for daily practice. This image shows a limitation of present scanning technology. While we can easily see this under the microscope, uh, most scanners cannot generate tissue images outside the cover, cover slides, even though we can easily spot the mistake by comparing the serial tissue. During the last decade, many international society and regulatory authorities published guidelines and recommendation papers on digital pathology, mainly CAP, DPA, ATA, FDA, CLIA, and CDC, the Society of Toxicological Pathology, and Canadian Association of Pathologists published guidelines papers from North, Korea, North America, EU, Spain, United Kingdom, Germany also published from Europe, and more recently, Asian countries like Japan and Australia also published on guidelines for DP. In Korea in 2019, there was a reimbursement uh, assessment guidelines for AI-based medical technology in pathology by Health Insurance uh, Review and Assessment Service. In 2020, the Digital Pathology Study Group of the Korean Society of Pathologists published a consensus research consensus report on the recommendation for pathology practice using di digital pathology, in which I partic participated as the first author. Last year, Korea FDA published a guideline for validation on the AI-based medical software, in which I was also involved as a consultant. About the safety of the digital pathology, there have been around 25 validation studies so far that compare the concordance between the diagnosis made under the diagnosis under the microscope and by whole slide imaging. Most studies showed generally fair enough uh, concordance with acceptable discordancy that is similar to similar or less than the intra-observer intra discordancy. Many different kinds of specimens were compared so far, although the number of the included samples is still not enough. And the level of evidence of these studies are relatively low with three or four, which is non-randomized clinical trial or case-controlled study. Recently, as the general uh, display 
as the general display quality is getting better and better, like Full HD, QHD, and 4Q, 4K UHD, uh, the image quality and computing power of reasonable PC workstation is generally acceptable for most of the specimen and stains to apply digital pathology. HE biopsy, excision, special stains, IHC, and even frozen sp specimen slides. However, we should pay more time and uh, effort on validation and trial operation on the, on the samples like cytology, special stains for microorganism detection, and the cases with the possibility of lymphoma. Cytology specimen contains cell cluster and uh, fragments that are dispersed three-dimensionally uh, between curver and glass slides. So we need a specialized focusing technique called Z-stacking that takes and combines serial images with different focusing depth. Uh, since we need more than five Z-stacking layers to scan cytology slides, uh, the scanning area and the scanning area of cytology slides is generally much bigger than the tissue slides. The size of the WSI file gets five to 10 times bigger than tissue sample file, and the scanning time gets also much big longer. Uh, so the uh, system gets much heavier and it, it can burden the whole DP system. Because of this reason, not all scanners support Z-stacking feature and some scanners support extended Z-stacking feature, which means stacking with a scanning with G-stacking layer but saving the file after combining several layers into one so that they can save storage. If you only use less than uh, three uh, Z-stacking layers, it will be harder to uh, make proper diagnosis because uh, you will not get a clear image of the case. So if you want to apply DP for cytology samples, you need to find an optimal Z-staking condition for your cytology samples that will not burden your DP system as well. Last year, I led a government project on establishing cytology image data for AI models, and I got a chance to compare the slide quality of cytology specimen produced by various scanners. Among these five uh, scanners, Roche and Philips uh, were Philips ones were not supporting Z-staking since it was not designed for cytology samples originally. Hamamatsu 3D Histec and uh, Hamamatsu and 3D Histec provide uh, extended Z-staking feature. Uh, so Hamamatsu Leica and 3D Histec was the only comparable scanners for cytology and quality, uh, and the quality, speed, file size, slide capacity scanning times were comparable in general. I tested 12 slides of various cytology specimens, uh, including gynecology, the respiratory tract sample, pleural fluid, ascites, uh, urine, thyroid, uh, salivary gland, and lymph node FNAs, and various cystaking with, with various cystaking condition. And I prepared some of the representative images. So this is the result. First, the papillary serous carcinoma from an acidic fluid scanned with one layer, which means no Z-staking or extended Z-staking. As you can see, there are slight color difference and clearance of the image. Uh, we already, as we already expected, Roche and Philips ones are not showing clear image for overlapping cell clusters. This is endocervical uh, adenocarcinoma from a pap smear with one layer Z-staking. Like I showed the most clear image of overlapping clusters, even though it was scanned without Z stacking. This is metastatic uh, pulmonary adenocarcinoma case from pleural fluid scanned with three layers. This is non invasive papillary urothelial uh, carcinoma, urothelial carcinoma, high grade from. A urine cytology scanned with three layers of Z-stacks. Uh, the cases with more than five layers did not show much difference on the clearance between uh, different, different scanners. For special stains for microorganism detection, there is the same issue with cytology. With more number of Z-stacking, you can get high definition images, but it also increases file size and scanning time, resulting in more burden to whole DP system.
Now, I'd like to introduce about the current status of digital pathology in Korea. Since the Seoul St. Mary's Hospital of the Catholic University of Korea first officially introduced the whole slide imaging on primary diagnosis in 2019, major university hospitals such as Seoul National University Hospitals, Samsung Medical Center, and Yonsei University Hospitals followed to implement DP systems serially. The Catholic University of Korea is the biggest university hospital chain in Korea, consisting of eight branch hospitals Seoul, Yeoido, Gyeongbu, Incheon, Bucheon, St. Vincent, and Daejeon, and Eunpyeong, with over 6,500 beds and 50 pathologists. The area that these hospitals are located covers almost 50% of Korean population. After the Seoul St. Mary's Hospital first launched the DP system in 2019, Eunpyeong St. Mary's Hospital and St. Vincent Hospital in Suwon introduced DP systems. Recently, Yijongbu St. Mary's Hospital, where I'm working at, also implemented DP system. Originally, there was close inter-institutional consultant between the hospitals via mail, and now it gets more easier and faster to do this consultation, and more active consulting is being made after the DP implementation. And currently, there are about 216 pathology labs in Korea, 85 in general hospitals, 82 in university hospitals, and 47 in commercial laboratories. This is very recent estimation on digital pathology distribution that are from scanning companies and the survey by Korean Society of Pathologists. And it may not be accurate because some of the institutes are still under the launching process. But anyway, 26 out of 82 university hospitals and 3 out of uh, 47 commercial laboratories launched the DP system uh, or are uh, expected to launch DP system within this year. Among the laboratories with DP, uh, 3D HISTEC and uh, Leica systems were most frequently installed, and eight institutes installed Roche, mostly because of image analysis, and the th there are three Philips and one Hamamatsu because they started to provide DP systems in Korea quite recently. The main purpose of DP system is research, followed by archive, consultation, and primary diagnosis. These are the DP systems in my hospital. We basically started DP for research projects and recently started to use it as also consultation, multidisciplinary conferences, and a student education. Uh, and maybe from next month, we will start scanning daily routine slides for primary diagnosis. Now, I'd like to talk about workflow of digital pathology system. This is conventional process of pathology practice made under the microscopic examination. As you already know, uh, after tissue processing and slide preparation, the cases are distributed to, distributed to each pathologist. We search previous biopsy slides while we are making diagnoses and order some additional stains. Stains. Sometimes we send the glass slides to get second opinion from other subspecialty experts via mail. Uh, that takes two to four days in general and even more than a week sometimes. After making a pathology report, the glass slides are stored in the uh, archive. To conduct a research, uh, teaching, or conference, we should find a case from the archive and take digital images using microscope with CCD cameras. However, in the digital pathology workflow, scanning process will be included after uh, slide preparation. Uh, before and after slide scanning, the quality of glass slides and the scanned images should be carefully checked by technicians, which is pre- and post-scanning quality check. Uh, but once the slides are scanned, uh, we can easily access to the previous biopsies image from the archive and instantly get consultation within a day, presentation, uh, conference, teaching, and research can be easier and faster. Using scan digital images, we can perform image analyses easier and get some help from AI analysis for the diagnosis or quality control. Because this additional step of scanning, there can be two kinds of errors, technical and human-derived errors. Technical errors include automated tissue binder failure, a skip blank stripe failure, and mismatched macro 
uh, with WSI and so on. So that, uh, that can happen before scanning or during the scanning process. So pre and post uh, scan quality check is essential to minimize these errors. On the other hand, human drive derived errors are mostly by failure to follow pre or post scan QC protocols. As I explained earlier, it is essential not to locate the tissue section outside of copper slides. Sometimes if the tissue is severely fragmented into tiny pieces, it is hard for scanners to find the scanning area automatically and miss out some part of the tissue. In this case, scanning operators should scan these slides by manual selection of scanning area. In general, uh, tissue fragments smaller than 30 micrometers can be easy, easily missed out. Sometimes there are technical errors of unclear reasons. Sometimes uh, macro image can be, cannot be matched with WSI. Some part of tissue can be missed out in the scanning error without reason. So post-scan quality check is also very important. Sometimes there are human errors such as labeling error by technician. This can result in serious consequences if it happens. So double check is essential. Blood image is one of the most common errors that is from both technical and human error, especially if you use this taking heavily by applying on a lot of cytology samples, the autofo autofocus motor can break down. So a random and total inspection on the image quality is required. Now I'd like to talk about quality assurance program for digital pathology. Quality assurance program for digital pathology consists of initial QAP during implementation, internal QAP during practice, and external QAP on a regular basis. During implementation of new equipment such as scanner, monitor, server, image viewer, anything within a digital pathology systems, in-house validation should be performed and laboratory standard operating procedure for the equipment and DP guidelines should be prepared. It is important to remind that the validation should be performed on a whole, whole digital pathology system, uh, even if you introduce one new equipment like a certain new scanner model, other than previously established models. During practice, uh, pre- and post-scan quality checkup should be done according to laboratory guideline, regular education for operating personnel and new users, regular checkup for DP systems like scanners and monitors should be done according to laboratory guideline, and document it accordingly. Additionally, external QAP by the academic regulatory organizations such as Korea Society of Pathologists or CAP or CLEAR, for example, should be done on a regular basis. Since 1995, the Korean Society of Pathologists is running a quality assurance program for all parts of uh, pathology and cytology and prepared a red book for digital pathology in 2020 and started a trial QAP for digital pathology last year. For validation and internal quality assurance program during implementation of new equipment, KSP recommends each institute to follow these 12 guidelines. Uh, these guidelines statement uh, was prepared based on the CAP guidelines for DP published in 2013. Briefly speaking of the validation process, one or more pathologists should make a diagnosis of 60 AG slides and 20 special stains and 20 IHC stains under the microscope. And after two weeks of washout period, it should be rechecked with WSI. The cases should be as similar as the actual clinical setting and the result of two methods can be pre compared and the concordance and discordant cases should be documented. As I mentioned earlier, as a basic reference for internal and external quality assurance program, uh, Korea, Korea Society of Pathologists developed a, and published Red Food for DP and is currently running a trial QAP annually only to the institutes that use uh, WSI for primary diagnosis. It contains 90, uh, 39 checklists for general consideration of DP systems, personal, hardware, and software, DP operation, management, and validation, personal information protection and security. 
Last year, five institutes participated the trial QAP because of COVID-19 situation, online assessment for institutional QAP for DP was performed. After the trial QAP, a feedback for the trial QAP from the participant inst institutes were collected. Most institutes uh, replied that they are uh, scanning average 60 to 70 percent of slides of daily routine, uh, which is 5,000 to uh, 50,000 cases annually. Very few institutes was using DP for IF, CISH, FISH, and cytology. And most responders uh, requested more education on digital pathology and QAP to KSP. For the last part of this lecture, I'd like to explain briefly about regulatory and healthcare insurance issue. The biggest hurdles for DP implementation are, are the cost of DP systems and whether DP technology can be incorporated into the reimbursement system of national healthcare insurance. There is no example in the world that the national healthcare insurance system directly incorporate DP into their reimbursement system. Although I heard that the indirect re reimbursement for DP was adopted in Japan recently, it is still under discussion in Korea. Generally, for new medical technology and products, the medical device approvement by Korea FDA and new technology assessment by NECA and uh, reimbursement assessment by HERA are essential process for market entry. Because Korea is based on a public health care insurance system and the public health care finance, which is basically similar to tax, the basic perspective of NHI is promoting the technology that can enhance healthcare service and reduce medical costs. It would be best if the new test can enhance accuracy and patient safety and reduce the cost by replacing expensive tests. However, digital pathology is a technology that can enhance patient safety, but the accuracy of pathologic diagnosis will not be significantly dif different than conventional microscopic diagnosis. On the other hand, implementation of DP system can increase cost, test time, and operating personnel, which will result in increase, increased medical cost. So di direct reimbursement of DP system in Korea might be questionable. Last year, Korea Health Industry Development Institute, KIDI, and the Ministry of Health and Welfare funded a new projects for digital pathology and artificial intelligence platform. The total amount of the fund was $500 million for the next five years to the three research consortiums, including Catholic University of Korea, Yonsei University Hospitals, and Samsung Medical Center. Each consortium includes 10 to 15 hospitals and 10 bio companies. This is a, sch a schematic illustration of a Cody Pi consorti consortium led by Catholic University of Korea. And these represent the consortium led by Yonsei University, University Hospital. And this represents the uh, Samsung Medical Center consortium. In addition, National Informati Information Society Agency, uh, NIA, uh, and the Ministry of Science and I ICT has funded national project from 2017, so-called Data Dam Project, uh, with a total amount of $45 billion till 2025 to make thousands of thousands kinds of data set for AI models such as healthcare, agriculture, geography, and language, etc. The part of the healthcare data, the data set of breast cancer, gynecologic pap smear, uh, gastrointestinal tract biopsy, and non-gynecologic cytology was collected as an annual project. I led the non-gynecologic cytology data set project last year, and this year, skin, project, skin pathology data set project will be collected uh, with a collaboration with Seoul National University and Samsung Medical Center. With aforementioned research projects, more than two, 20 university hospital laboratories got a chance to set up a whole 
a slide scanner to their institutes. In late 2020, Health, Health Insurance Review and Assessment Service, HERA, published the guideline for the reimbursement assessment for AI-based pathology technology. It also includes the new technology assessment guidelines and they divided the pathology AI models into five categories based on the features. So, so category A is basically a supportive, supportive tool for workflow just such as blood detection and a color normalization model. Category B was defined as minor supportive tool for pathology diagnosis such as mitosis detection. Category C is major supportive tool for pathology diagnosis such as cancer detection models and Gleason scoring models. Category D is a model that provides new information other than use usual pathologic diagnosis such as mutation prediction and survival prediction. And the category E is a model that can provide additional cost effectiveness. Category D and E can be considered as a new technology and eligible to get a new reimbursement code after assessment. After new technology assessment by NECA, HERA conduct a reimbursement assessment based on a level of medical practice. The pathology practice using category A and B models belongs to level 1. The category C1 goes to level 2, which will not get any additional reimbursement. Category C2 and D, E goes to level 3 and 4 respectively and will get an additional reimbursement. So HERA is basically trying to support the cost of digital pathology by supporting image analysis or computer-assisted computer diagnosis using AI models. Since the page prostate by page AI obtained the first FDA clearance in 2020, Korea companies DeepBio and Buno obtained Korea FDA clearance just sequentially. This year, DeepCRC by DeepNoid one of my collaboration project of on the AI models for colon biopsy is preparing FDA clinical trials as well. In summary, DP is a new fundamental of future pathology that serves as a platform for various applications in image analysis, computer-assisted diagnosis, education, and research. Many studies validated DP is safe for daily practice, including most HE, special stains, IHC, and frozen slides. About 10 to 15% of institutes already studied WSI in Korea, mostly for research and consultation. And now more and more labs will join soon. Because of ad additional scanning process is necessary, pre and post scanning QC is essential. Before implementing DP system, in-house validation should be performed by comparison between microscopy and DP diagnosis using 60 HE, 20 special, and 20 IHEC slides. And finally, indirect reimbursement via AI algorithm and government-driven career research project might be a good opportunity for digital transformation of pathology in Korea. Thank you for your time and please feel free to leave questions and comments here. I'll try my best to answer as possible as I can. And also please visit my research gate and YouTube for further collaborations. Thank you.